This introduction to pivot tables is going to show you how to summarize your data in ways, especially when you don't have, you're not doing mathematical calculations, you're not doing percent change calculations or summing up a set of numbers, but you, that is possible as well with pivot tables. But most of the things that we might want to do as journalists with data finding the trends and the patterns, how many of this, how many of that, how does this compare to last year versus the year before, if that is most often accomplished um, with pivot tables, especially if our data is very detailed. So I have a fun data set that I found online. Somebody uh, put this together and shared it publicly. Um, they tracked every cartoon character in New Yorker issues in the year 2014. And so each row represents a character in a cartoon. Um, and it identifies the issue, what date it was, what page it was on, and then um, some information about the name of the cartoonist, and then information about the character, their ethnicity, gender, uh, the kind of a guess on the occupation and whether or not the person was talking, like if they had those bubble quotes or something. In the, in the notes, the, the person who compiled this noted that occupation was particularly tough. Uh, notice oftentimes it just says person. Um, and when they started collecting this, they thought maybe they would get something useful out of this, but it's probably not very useful. But we can do things like looking at, so a common question we often have is, is uh, equal representation for men and women and um, white people versus students uh, versus people of color. And so we have that here and we have it for each cart cartoon character. And it's important to remember in your data what each row represents. So each row is a character, not necessarily a cartoon because each cartoon might have more than one character. And you can, you can kind of guess here that these two are probably in the same cartoon. It's on page 20 um, of the same issue, um, and it's the same cartoonist. Um, my one uh, beef with this data set is that they did not do a cartoon ID number to identify which ones are in the same cartoon. Um, but you can see here now we have all, all these, we have white, non-white, we have female, male, um, but if, what if we wanted to add them together and say what percentage of the characters were white versus what percentage were non-white, which percentage were female versus male? The easiest way to do that is in a pivot table. So um, uh, pivot tables uh, scare a lot of people, but uh, hopefully I can give you some simple guidance to get started. Um, the main thing is to have your cursor somewhere in your data set, not out here in the big white open space. So we'll just put our cursor in here and go to the insert menu at the top. And over on the left should be pivot table. If you're on a Mac, this might be in a little different place. Uh, insert pivot table. And it's going to bring up this first box. It's going to tell you, it's guessed which range of data, where your range of data is. Um, and it should have guessed correctly. If it didn't, here's your chance to fix that. And then it's going to ask you, where do you want the pivot table? A new worksheet or an existing? I recommend always just leaving a new worksheet. Say OK. And then it's going to bring up this pivot table editor. And you've got two pieces. You've got on the left is where our answer is going to show up. On the right is our, our pivot table builder. And you'll see that it's listed our column, um, various columns from our data set. Here's where ha you must have your columns labeled. Otherwise, they just simply won't even show up in this list. They just won't be there. And then down here we have filters, columns, rows, and values. So let's start, we're going to start with rows. So we, we want to know how many, let's start with gender. How many characters were men? How many characters were women? So envision what you want your answer to look like. Um, you want your answer to be M and F um, and then a number next to each one. So that the thing that you want is your row, the M and the F is what you want in the rows. So we're going to take gender and drag it down here to rows. Um, and now you see there's the M and F, just like we envisioned. Now, in order to count up how many there are, um, we're not summer summing a, a value field that has numbers in it. Remember, our sheet just has M and F. But we want to count how many M's and how many F's. 
And basically we're just counting rows. And the way to tell a pivot table to count rows is to just feed it any column that is filled in fully. And our, we can use our filter here to see that there is a value in every row in the gender column. So as long as there's a value in there, it will be able to count it. So we can take gender again and put it in values. You'll see what it's done is say count of gender. And look at over here now we have 533 females and 1,277 males. Yes, there's a discrepancy. We can see that right away. But we can get a little fancier here. Um, if you click on count of gender, you'll get one of the options is value field settings. Here is where we can do different math. Let's say we did have a dollar value field or some numeric field that we wanted to add the values together rather than counting the rows. Here's where we could change that. Um, you can do averages and minimum and maximum. Um, we're also going to use the show value as tab in a minute. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Just remember that's there. But right now there's our count of gender. Um, and we'll, um, I'm going to label this gender as a sheet and we're going to go back to our original sheet. Now let's start that again and this time let's do the ethnicity. So insert, pivot table, make sure your range is set in a new worksheet, say OK. And this time we're going to put ethnicity in the rows and we'll have it count the rows as well in there. So, um, non-white 96 characters, white 1714 characters. Oof, that's a big difference. Okay, so right now this is the number of characters we have. I want to know what that percentage is. Sure, you can go calculate that on a calculator if you want. But let's grab ethnicity again and bring it down a second time into values. It's going to repeat it. But this time on the second one, click on that and go to value field settings and go to that Show Values As tab. Right now it says No Calculation. But we have some, if you click on No Calculation, you'll get some options. You can say Percent of Grand Total, Percent of Column, Percent of Row, um, and there's some other ones here. So in this case, if we wanted to say Percent of Grand Total, what that would do is take that 96 and divide it by 1,810. In other words, what percentage of all the characters are non-white and what percentage of all the characters are white. Um, the percent of column and percent of row come into play when you start doing cross tabulations, which we're not going to get into here. So we'll say percent of grand total. Now we have both the number and the percentage right next to each other. Let's do one more pivot table. So I'm going to label this ethnicity. And now we'll go back to our original sheet. Oh, here, I want to make sure I point this out. The, the pivot table fields a builder thing is here, what, but it sometimes will just disappear on you. And that happens if you click outside of your uh, pivot table. Um, so if you, all you have to do is click back in your pivot table, and this will come back. All right, so let's go back to our original data, and I'm going to I'm going to call this main data. I like to keep my sheets named. Um, the thing we didn't look at is, is how many... Um, uh, I want to know if there's one cartoonist that maybe draws more men or women. This is where we'd want to do a crosstab. We're going to do a really simple crosstab just to show you how it works. So data, a cursor in our data, insert menu, pivot table, select the range, new worksheet, OK. So this time, let's put the cartoonist in the rows. So there's our list of our cartoonists. It's kind of a long. And you want to try to remember, uh, if you're doing two things like this, put the longer thing going down and the shorter thing going across. So in this case, uh, we already know gender is just two, two things, men and women. So we'll, put, so we'll put gender in the columns. And note, we still don't have any values here. So we're going to pull down one of the columns again to do the count of rows. So there's the count of gender. Now we can sort this. Let's say um, we want to sort it by whoever's done the most cartoons. That would be the grand total. So I'm going to put my cursor on the first number in grand total. Go to the data menu. And this time I'm just going to push the Z to A button. And it, 
it tells me uh, the cartoonist named Noth has the most character. This would be the most characters, 98 of them. Not, this is not cartoons. This is characters, remember? Um, he has 98 of them, 76 men, 22 women. So um, remember, we can um, do that percentage. So let's go back over to the values box and click on count of gender, choose value field settings, and show values as. This time, let's say percent of row total. So because we want to know what percentage of Noth's characters, uh, out of his 98 characters, what percentage are female and what percentage are male. I'm going to say OK. And oh, we got a lot of decimal points here, but you can quickly see that over 77% of his characters are male, 22% are female. And, and we can sort this. Oops. Uh, it's not going to sort properly in here, it looks like. Um, but then you also have a grand total at the bottom. And you can see that overall, 70% of the characters are male and 30% are female. There you go. Those are the basics of a pivot table. Um, it has its limitations, but for some simple calculations like this, it, it's pretty easy to use. Thank you.